We're bringing in Ashley today to speak about the ins and outs of purchasing an investment property. Ashley, what a perfect and timely subject. So an investment property from the lending point of view is a property that you are not going to occupy for any part of the year and that you're going to rent out and claim rental income. Generally speaking, you know, the rules of thumb to start preparing is assets. People need to save their assets. When you buy an investment property, you can't use gift funds like if you were buying a primary residence. It has to be all your own money, and that can be a 401k. That could be someone that's using a home equity line of credit on an existing property they own or real estate to use towards a down payment. That could be, you know, cashing in investments as long as there's a paper trail. But what it can't be is a gift or, hey, I have a bag of funds, you know, sitting in a safe. Let me put it in the bank and go buy an investment property right away. So generally, when you buy a single family, you need to put down 15%. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. When you buy a two to four unit property, you have to put down 25%. And again, that has to be your own funds. And in addition to that, the banks want to see that you have six months of mortgage payments for that investment property. So it's not just the down payment. You need to have what's called the reserves as well. One of the things that a lot of our investors do is they actually, and I I don't necessarily know if a financial advisor would say this is a good plan or not, but what they do is they leverage the equity in some of the homes that they've had for a while and they've paid it down. So basically they have a single family home with say, you know, 200,000 in equity. Okay. So then they'll go buy, you know, a $400,000 multifamily type of property. And then they'll take, that would be 25% of the the 400,000, which would be a hundred K, right? So they'll take a hundred thousand dollars from equity and then they'll, they'll pop it in there and then they'll have the reserves in their bank account. And then they'll just keep this circle going. And, and then what they do is when all of the rent comes in, a lot of times, especially if they're younger, they're going to go ahead and use the rent to pay down the the uh, principal balance and get those loans paid down very quickly. Interestingly enough, um, the agencies, which are Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, are going to be changing their rental income um, guidelines for qualifying. So in other words, when someone buys a multifamily home or an investment property, we can use 75% of the fair market rent to help okay. cover the cost and qualify. Okay, Freddie Mac already changed its guidelines that they're saying, no, 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 nope, you can't use the rental income to help offset the mortgage and qualify for this loan unless you have a year of landlord experience and you already own a mortgage and have proven that you can pay it. The lending end of it, we are going to make sure that the property basically safe and livable um, anyway. Mm -hmm. If, let's say, a person wanted to buy an investment property and, you know, it's a foreclosure or there's some, you know, uh, issues with the property, we do have a rehab loan for a single family investment property, but not on the multifamilies. Mm -hmm. So we can lend some extra money to make some of these repairs.